According to this priest, who maintains close ties between the Vatican and Catholic churches of the East, dying for the faith is not a thing of the past. Martyrdom in general is grossly either undervalued or almost unknown with a lot of our Catholic public in the first world. They, they think of martyrdom as like 10 centuries ago or something like that, some you know bizarre circumstance, uh, uh, a burning at a stake or something like that. Uh, so the concept, I, I think we have to remind people. Now we have instances, Pope John Paul in his relating to the world Catholic population in the choices of canonizations and so forth, he would highlight some of these heroes of the Second World War even, uh, or even afterwards, who literally gave their lives, offered my life so that this person could be free. I think we have to do a better job with that in terms of these people today uh, who literally are laying down their lives. Sometimes it's totally unknown, but we have to do our best. We have to do our best uh, to try to share these stories. You know, you don't need something super dramatic to illustrate a point that people are literally giving their lives for Christ. Sometimes it's done in such a private, silent way, but no less effective and no less total than someone whose life and death have been written about, even made into movies. So I, I think we have to uh, bring that concept back into the public conscience. Monsignor John Kozar leads the New York-based Catholic Near East Welfare Association, or Kanewa for short. They work to bring aid to the Middle East. They build convents, seminaries, diocesan offices, hospitals, and schools to keep them going. But they also work in favor of orphans, handicapped, and disadvantaged, and promote Christian unity. The position gives him a privileged view of how the church acts and exists in the Holy Land. Well, uh, I was just there, and I, I have to say, first of all, it's, uh, it's extremely complicated. I, I have to be honest, I, I knew a little bit about a lot of different things. Uh, and I would say after being there for almost four weeks, I know a little bit more about a lot of things. But, and I think I've separated out uh, some of uh, the difficulties and uh, the clashes that take place, the fragile nature of what appears to be peace, but maybe really isn't. Um, but it, it's very complicated, very complicated. But underlying all of the complexities and all of the personality conflicts, and, and I must say, I've, I felt some of those even within the churches. Uh, I, I must say, though, that from the poor, from the people themselves, and I find this all over the world in my other mission job, the poor really uplifted me. The simplicity of their faith, uh, the, the endurance, the patience that they have. Even if their leaders uh, squabble, or even if they're persecuted, or even if the rules change on any given day with a government or an authority or whatever it might be, the people, I think, through their faith, they endure. He sees plenty of reasons for hope, but he also sees the possibility of there being a run of modern martyrs. I, I think there will be perhaps a new wave. And historically, we've had this. They're unnamed. They're unnamed, but it was this group that was massacred, this group that died in a bombing, uh, or something like that. It may not, in the minds of some, have the full weight of um, you know, a dramatic, long-term story, but again, not to diminish one iota the dignity of that person or persons giving their life for Christ.